Uh, the next question is about what should I do if my OCD affects my religious practices and obligations? OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder in an Islamic paradigm is referred to as waswasa, which means the whispers and the insinuations and the temptations of shaitan. In the context of a religious obsessive compulsive disorder, there's a name for it. It's called religious scrupulosity where your OCD is tied into certain rituals within your religion. And this is a very dangerous cycle to, to, to experience because, for example, the person starts assuming or they start thinking to themselves, I haven't washed a particular limb or I haven't performed my istinja correctly. So they make istinja. Then they pour some more water. Then they pour some more water. Then they think that the splashes of the water may be touched somewhere so then they start rinsing there then they start okay now what happens to the water that that's on my hand after i touch the the water you know and it, it goes on and on and on and on and what's happening in the meantime shaitan is standing on the side and he's laughing because he's actually using your religion to distract you from allah he's using your religion to distract you from allah and he's making you you He's making you attain perfection. When you know that you cannot attain perfection, perfection belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what should you do? There are two ways of combating this uh, from an Islamic paradigm. The one is that you should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance, right? And the way that you turn to Allah ta'ala for assistance is by spiritual reformation. Because waswasa in the Islamic paradigm is looked at as a spiritual disease that requires spiritual treatment. So for this, you need to engage in the science of tazkiyah to nafs and find the diseases of your soul and work on them by applying the remedies that you find in the science of tazkiyah to nafs. The second approach would be the psychological approach. That f um, for somebody finding themselves with, with this problem, they need to, they need to seek uh, therapy from a Muslim, ideally a Muslim counselor who understands this phenomenon. It's, it's critically important that it is from a Muslim counselor who understands this phenomenon. And why am I saying so? Because uh, I believe that religious scrupulosity for Muslims is, is somewhat unique. I can't imagine what exactly this would, f you know, sort of form as for a non-Muslim um, like a, like somebody from the Christian faith, for example, where there are not as many worship rituals right, as there is for a Muslim. For a Muslim, there's istinja, there's wudu, there's ghusl, there's najasat and how to clean najasat. And then there's matters of iman and kufr. And then there's a matter of uh, saying the word talaq if you're married. All of these are matters with which religious scrupulosity manifests itself. So only a Muslim uh, therapist will understand this um, and would be able to advise accordingly. So both approaches are necessary, the spiritual approach as well as the psychological approach. So those are the approaches, but there's something that, uh, that I believe is a standard that every person who suffers from this must reach. And that is understanding who Allah is and who I am. Understanding that Allah is merciful, is Rahman. That Allah Ta'ala gives us a particular set of criteria. We implement that, we follow that, and we trust in Allah's mercy. We hope in Allah's mercy. Allah Azza wa Jal is not going to give us the requirements of wudu and then punish us because there's a, there's a possibility of one hair on the elbow that perhaps remained dry. This is not this is not how Allah is, you know, with his servants. So that type of relationship is the basis for improving one's situation in this uh, regard. Uh, understanding that Allah Ta'ala does not burden me with such levels of uh, minutia that is going to invalidate my relationship with him. And finally, uh, it is important for the person who finds themselves with this problem to not repeat their actions for the person who under normal circumstances can't remember whether they are in the third raka'ah or the fourth raka'ah of a particular prayer 
the normal rule is assume that I'm in the third rak'ah and build on an extra rak'ah. This rule is not to be applied to a person with OCD or religious scrupulosity. A person with wudu who is doubtful, did I break my wudu earlier on by passing wind or did I not? Such a person, because they know that they had wudu but they're doubting whether they broke wind or not, they would assume that they, that they still have wudu. For a person with religious scrupulosity, they would always take the approach of, I finished it, I did it, I, I've, I've attained it, so they have wudu, right? If they unsure whether they're in the third or fourth rak'ah, I've finished the fourth rak'ah and I'm going to end my salah. If they take the approach of, I assume the lesser and then I build on, they'll be building on until qiyamah, that's highly problematic, then the deen is going to become difficult for them. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, no one makes the deen difficult upon them except that it will overpower them. May Allah make it easy. It's not something pleasant to be suffering from. May Allah Ta'ala grant cure to those who suffer from it. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah